as a teacher educator, uh, one of my missions in life is to challenge the way teachers currently teach. And I do this with video games. Um, I was not convinced that video gaming was a viable strategy until I started playing video games with my son. Uh, when we play Tiny Tower, any of you play Tiny Tower? Uh, the objective of this game is to build as tall a tower as you can uh, by populating it with as many stores, interesting stores and people called citizens. Yeah. And uh, as we played this game, I realized that uh, I could teach him math concepts as well as teach him time management skills. After my son played uh, Angry Birds and Lego Star Wars, he would run up to his room to draw comics in order to tell stories based on the uh, game characters. Um, and I realized that this was an opportunity for me to develop his language skills by talking to him about uh, spelling, grammar, and how to tell a story. Uh, I also realized that I could develop his uh, reasoning skills by asking him, what if, question. Now, the more I did this, the more I realized that other parents and other teachers possibly do the same thing with their own kids. So that's how my story began. I'm here today to tell you how that story continues and how I hope to see it develop in the future. Before I begin, let me show you a couple of stats of a particular mobile app. Can you guess what this app is? Anyone? Ah, yes. That app is Angry Birds. Yeah? The objective of this game is very simple. Kill as many naughty pigs as possible by flinging an assortment of birds at them. So, somehow, no one seems to question why these birds have no wings <laughs> and, why, and why they need to be flung from catapult. <laughs> Whatever the case, uh, these birds have flung themselves out of our iPhone screens and our computer screens and invaded our lives. We have seen, we have seen some of these products at stores in malls. These angry birds have even invaded the Singapore heartland. However, these angry birds have a no-fly zone, our schools. <laughs> By this, I am not referring to the Angry Birds pencils, erasers, and files that our kids carry in their Angry Birds school bags. I'm referring to the fact that teachers don't use a game like Angry Birds for teaching or learning. I would like to see teachers use games like Angry Birds to change the way they teach. But before I do that, why should we even consider playing games for education? There are lots of reasons. I'll not bore you with lots of details, just some quick uh, snippets from life. You're familiar with this site. As you take the train or the bus, you will inv invariably spot a few individuals plugged into their games, right? They are spending the humdrum travel time to entertain themselves or to challenge themselves. My question is, why aren't we using this time to get them to learn something? You're also familiar with this site. Kids staring into their gaming devices. Now, this is not surprising given a, a, a recent study that revealed that 9 out of 10 kids in the US are already gamers. How many Singaporeans are already gamers? I can't tell you. But a recent study by one of my colleagues at the National Institute of Education has revealed that Singapore gamers spend a lot more time playing video games than their US counterparts. Why else should we be, why should, else should we be considering uh, playing games for education? There is a group called the New Media Consortium, and they are a think tank. What they do, they predict trends in educational technology. And in this year's Horizon report, they predicted that game-based learning will become more common in about three years' time. And there already is a demand for game-based learning. A study by a company called Latitude has revealed that three out of four of the participants wish to see games applied in education. So as a teacher educator, what I try to do is to create an awareness of the culture of gaming in the teachers that I come into contact with. 
Uh, I facilitate a number of courses and workshops at the National Institute of Education. Where there are game-based learning components, I conduct them like a treasure hunt. I tell my participants to imagine that they are in a huge field or a very large beach where I have buried lots of treasure. I do not attempt to cover a curriculum of game-based learning. They uncover the concepts of game-based learning. By the end of this gaming treasure hunt, they find answers to two main questions. One, what is game-based learning? And two, how might I apply game-based learning concepts even if I do not play games in my class? To help them out in this journey, I set up uh, game stations <coughs> on the PC, on the Nintendo Wii, and on the smartphones. This to immerse them in the games. Yeah. I also leave clues in the form of QR codes. Uh, a QR or quick response code is like a barcode. Yeah. If you were to scan this uh, QR code here <coughs> with an app on your smartphone, this it will lead you to a YouTube video to see what this process looks like in one of my classes. The other thing I require my participants to do is to observe and video record their peers at play. They do this to identify and to illustrate game-based learning concepts. For example, they may go to one station and think that, okay, this is competition in action. I need to record that. And then they might uh, record collaboration at another station. Then they get into their group and try to figure out what it is that they've learned about game-based learning. They reflect together in their groups or they write individually in their blogs. With some cohorts, I use a tool called Edmodo, which is uh, I like to, something I like to call Facebook for education. After a few weeks of doing this, uh, I put them out of their misery by, uh, by delivering a closing lecture to unearth any still buried treasure. Now, before uh, the, teacher, the teachers attend uh, this gaming treasure hunt, they have a very fixed, limited way of how games might be incorporated into education. This photo is of a physics question that has made its round on Facebook. Many teachers think of incorporating games like Angry Birds this week. The students aren't actually playing Angry Birds, and the teacher is focusing a lot on delivering content or testing it. After they go through this gaming experience with me, they think in at least two different ways. The first is, if I have to deliver content, can I use a game that is not designed with that content in mind? For example, would it be possible to use Angry Birds to teach civics and moral <laughs> education? <laughs> Consider how the birds selflessly sacrifice themselves for a cause. <laughs> Good guys, the birds, attack the bad guys, the pigs. But they lose their lives in the process. Now, I'm not suggesting that in order to make civics and moral education real, we ask our kids to kill themselves. <laughs> I am suggesting, however, that we leverage on what kids already know about angry birds. Yeah, and get them to answer this question. Would you do the same thing as the Angry Birds? Or a cause? Now, if you think about it, don't you think the birds are behaving like suicide bombers or terrorists? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the good guys are the pigs, and the bad guys are the birds. Yeah? Now, introducing a topic like terrorism in social studies or in language learning can be a very disturbing experience. Unless we live in a place where terrorism is right, we cannot fully understand or relate to this uh, concept. So why not use a game like Angry Birds to provide this initial context to create that cognitive dissonance and to get our learners to take different perspectives. Now the second way, uh, the second takeaway that my teachers have after experiencing this gaming treasure hunt is that perhaps off-the-shelf games like Angry Birds aren't really good at delivering content. Perhaps the focus should be on teaching our students social skills and thinking skills. Now in the Angry Birds community, there are 
players to create video tutorials for others who may be stuck at certain stages. Yeah. Now, can you imagine the amount of work that takes place to create these videos? They have to plan them, script them, shoot them, and edit them. Can you imagine the amount of learning that takes place as they negotiate and debate the best strategies? Imagine learners who are creating content to actively teach instead of consuming content to passively learn. Now imagine this transferring to the classroom. Now ultimately what I try to do is to change the mindset of teachers with gaming and how it might be implemented in education. Now this is not easy in Singapore's context given our uh, uh, obsession with exams and with grades. But change is coming. Yeah? And with it, game-based learning. Um, even though game-based learning is uh, emerging from the horizon, I'm not leaving it to chance. Teachers tend to teach the way they are taught. And so what I try to do is model a different process. In no way have I invented game-based learning. But I think I have started planting a few seeds in some teachers so that they view games and game-based learning from a different light. Right now, the view of gamers is a very negative one. Gamers are perceived as solitary, antisocial, and maybe even addicted to games. But I think that if we can learn from games and figure out what makes them addictive and apply these principles in education, then perhaps one day we might say that our kids are addicted to learning. If we can do this, then I think we might effectively kill two things <laughs> one bird. On one hand, we focus on the positive aspects of games. On the other, we create teachers who can teach in a more relevant and meaningful way. Now, if any of you wish to join me on my quick killing game playing journey, I encourage you to let me know, to share your thoughts and drink the lunch break. Thank you very much. <laughs>